Let's look at chapter three of Pagano's Understanding Statistics. One of the main characteristics of humans, a, hum a characteristic that's almost universal, but not quite, is that humans don't like looking at large piles of numbers. Now, you might be saying, but they're t making us take a statistics course. Of course we're supposed to like huge piles of numbers. Nope, nope, nope. One of the main uh, values of statistics is to take a large group of numbers and simplify them into a smaller group so that we can actually understand what's going on. And that's, what, that's one of the main functions of a frequency distribution. Let's take this example where we have uh, 70 uh, scores on a test. And let's say that this is from a, a pre-employment test. We, uh, we did a test uh, maybe on writing ability, maybe on cognitive ability, maybe a skills test, something like that. And we have uh, the results from 70 employees. And we want to make sense out of what our employees look like. Um, we're not going to make a decision right now. We just want to get a sense of what type of people, what type of scores are uh, uh, the, our potential employees experiencing. Now, when you look at just this, this, this list here, it kind of like goes all over the place. There's so many numbers. You can kind of tell what's going on a little bit. It seems like there's a lot of 60s and 70s. Uh, hmm, what else is happening? Uh, oh, here's a 99. That seems to be about as high as it goes. Uh, I don't, oh, there's a 46. Maybe that's how low it goes. Just when we get a huge pile of numbers like this, it is not easy to figure out what's going going on. So we want to put it into a frequency distribution. We want to look at how many of each type of score that we have. Now, the simplest frequency, uh, frequency distribution that we can have has what's known as a class interval or a bin width of one. It's like you're like when you're sorting laundry and you put different clothes into different bins. So it's the same thing with uh, these numbers. We have a bin for 99, we have a bin for 98, we have a bin for 97, and we say this is a bin width of 1, so it's basically one number fits into each bin. And we go through all 70, do 70 uh, uh, scores, and we see that there's 199, 098s, 097s, 296s, and so on. And this is a this is this is a lot easier to understand than the last one. There's still an awful lot of numbers, but they're in order, and we're told how many of each type of number we have. And we can see that oh, looking around here, that seems to be where the biggest concentration is: upper upper 70s, maybe lower 80s. It's really easy to find the range: high scores 99, low scores 46. But it doesn't. We can't really tell if this is smooth or if it's choppy going up and down we can't really tell just by looking at this because there's just so many empty bins and uh, there's just so many numbers still so we could arrange it differently well we could try a bin width of two where here we have all the 98s and 99s together 96s and 97s 94s and 95s and that gives us a, a good illustration of what's happening. There's still a lot of numbers, a lot of 76s and 77s. Or if we say, well, maybe two's too small, let's try 19. Hmm, nobody likes 19, but we'll just try it as, a, as kind of a fairly large number. And we have uh, bins going from 95 to 113 and so on. And we can see, oh yeah, and this 76 to 94, there's an awful lot. There's 70 altogether. Hmm, here it looks like there's just too few bins to really get a good shape. There's a lot in these two bins, not too many in those. The, the goal, what we want to do, is we want to find the right number of bins that will communicate most clearly to us. Now, one way of doing this is finding bins that have logical divisions. Um, and so we might want to try something like, well, let's have the upper 90s, lower 90s, upper 90s, lower 90s, upper 80s, lower 80s, upper 70s, lower 70s, upper 60s, and so on. 
Now, something to, to note here is that even though this bin says it's 95 to 99, and this one's 90 to 94, if we were just a little bit below 95, we would round up to it. In fact, anything from 94.5 to 99.5 would go into this bin. And so we say that these are the real limits of that bin. And similarly, from here, anything from 89.5 to 94.5 would go in there. But you might say, oh, wait, I thought we were going to put 94.5 there. Well, actually, this is like 94.9999999999. And so if it's actually exactly 0.5, we would round it up into this bin. But uh, we don't have to write all the 0.499999s out. We, we write it this way. And so these are the real limits of each bin. So it looks like even though this 95 to 99 is a, uh, a width of 4, but it really goes to 94.5 to 99.5. So it's really a width of 5. So we would create these bins. We would go through each number, and we could hand tally how many uh, uh, in each bin go. And then we would get numbers like 4 in the first bin, 6 in the second bin, 7 in the the upper 80s, 10 in the lower 80s, and this actually looks like a pretty good way of grouping these numbers, and we can see that, oh yeah, it is the lower 80s, the upper uh, 70s that have the most, down in the lower 40s there's a few, and upper 90s there's a few, but not many, and so this is a, a good way of doing the frequency distribution. Here, we're going to do an example. We're going to make a frequency distribution of shoe sizes of a sample of students from Azusa Pacific University. Um, what bin width should we use? Here are some general rules. Use logical round numbers or use round numbers or logical divisions to de define the bins. Maybe multiples of 5 or multiples of 10 or maybe things that just group together nicely. A good rule is the finger rule. Between 5 and 10 bins is a good number, between one hand and two hands. But you want to avoid empty bins because empty bins make it look choppy and you can't really get a sense of a, a how smooth the distribution is. So what we want to do is we want to define the bins, tally, and count. And here are some data from some shoe sizes. I think there's about 17 uh, data from a, a class that I, I taught. And I want you to put them in, a, create a, uh, uh, a frequency table and count them up. Following for, first of all, I want you to define the bins, tally, and then count those tallies up and put it in a nice table. Now, notice how I put all these numbers in a horizontal row. That's horrible. That's mean of me. That's evil. You should never present numbers in a horizontal row. Always present them in columns. It's so much easier to, to read them that way. I just did them this way so that you can see how bad it is to present a horizontal row of numbers. It's really difficult to read. Well, now I encourage you to pause and work on a frequency distribution. And then on the next screen, we'll see what uh, one possible solution is. So here's one possible solution. Um, we could group all of the shoes that are fives together, all that are sixes, like six and six and a half, all the sevens, all the eights, all the nines, all the tens, elevens, and twelves, and then count how many sixes do we have. How many sixes and six point fives would go together in the same group. And we get a nice distribution. I put these the endpoints on where there aren't any, just to make it clear that Really, the shoe sizes go from 6 to 11.5. We don't have any 12s or, or 5s. But we get a good distribution and see that it's, it's kind of focused on this way. But there's a few people with a, a big feet, and this is a good way of doing a, a frequency distribution. Now, in terms of frequency distribution, um, there's a couple other vocabulary words I'd like to point out. So, so far we've looked at class intervals, and here we have the upper 90s, lower 90s, upper 80s, lower 80s. And we have the, the frequency, how many each occur. But I want to introduce you to the concept of relative frequency. And that's the number divided by the total number of, uh, of, 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 of uh, data points in our sample. So, for example, here there's... 4 in the upper 90s, 4 out of 70s, and if you punched 4 
uh, divided by 7 to your calculator, you'd get about 0 0.06 if you rounded to two decimal points. And that means that there's about 6% of the scores fall in this bin. This is the largest bin, where 16 divided by 70 is 0.23, so 23% of the values lay in this upper 70s bin. And we could do that for all of them, and it'll add up to 100%. Now the cumulative frequency is looking at how many uh, uh, scores are in a bin and the bins below it. So we start at the bottom, and in the bottom bin there's one, so we can say that there's one in the bottom bin and any bins below it. There's two in the 50 to 54, so we can say that there's two plus one in, the, uh, uh, in this bin and the bins below it. So basically, we just add the next bin into each one. So by the time we get up to the upper 80s, the cumulative frequency is 60. That means that counting this bin and the bin below it, there's 60 of the scores in it. And of course, when we get to the very top bin, it has to be all of the scores. 70 uh, of the scores are in the top bin or below. Now, this cumulative frequency is uh, useful for calculating uh, 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 percentiles, which is what we can we are, we can also call the cumulative percentage, where we take the cumulative frequency and divide it by the total number of scores that we have. For example, down here for the upper 50s, there were a cumulative frequency of seven, or in the upper 50s or below, seven uh, uh, divided by 70 would be one tenth or 10 percent. So we can say 10 percent of the scores are in the upper 50s or below. And so these are cumulative percentile, cumulative percents that we'll use for calculating percentiles.